start with teacher. Hello, teachers and friends, classmates. Welcome to our presentation. Today, we are going to talk about the storyteller by Hector Hugh Munro and our group activity, which is prediction table. Our group members include Ya Bao, Becky, Mayang, Hai Dang, and Miesco. So, as you know, a part, there are five parts of a plot diagram, which includes the exposition, rising action, climax, falling action, and resolution. To begin, we will start with the exposition first. And the event given here is when the arm recommend them to behave. So, I will tell you the story in this event. So, it was a hot afternoon and on a train, there were five main characters, which is the small boy and the two little girls, the aunt and the bachelor. And the bachelor sit opposite to them. And they are, they are, are um, communicating in a very limited, persistent way. Reminding one of the attentions of a housefly that refuses to be discouraged. And most of the aunt's remarks seem to begin with don't and nearly all of the children's remark begins with why. And one of the examples which is don't, zero, don't, exclaim the aunt as the small boys began smacking the cushions of the seat, producing a cloud of dust at each blow. After that, she, she said, come and look out the window. And Sarah asked, why are those sheep in that hill? And the aunt said that they are being driven to another field where there's more grass. But the boy said that there's a lot of grass in the field and there's nothing else but grass there. And the aunt said, Perhaps the grass in another field is better. He asked again, why is it better? And she distracted him by saying that, there, look at those cows. Nearly every field along the line con had contained bullocks, but she spoke as though that she was drawing attention to a rarity. And he asked again, why is the grass on the other field better? Yeah, Bao, keep holding. So this is part of our prediction table to this the exposition. It's when the aunt reprimand them to behave. Our prediction was that the children were mad for the aunt for reprimand them to behave. But with text evidence, is most of the aunt's remarks seems to begin with don't nearly all of the children's remarks begin with why. And the second one is don't, zero, don't, exclaimed the aunt as the small boy began smacking the cushions of the seat, producing a cloud of dust at each blow. Okay, so now I will tell you about the rising action when the aunt was storytelling. So, <clears throat> come over here to listen to a story said the aunt when the bachelor has looked twice at her as one as a communication cord the children move listlessly toward the the aunt's end of the carriage Even, <clears throat> evidently her reputation as a storyteller does not rank high in the estimation in a low confidence of voice interrupt as requests interval white loud petulant questioning from her listener listener she began an enterprise an enterprising and deplorably <laughs> an interesting story about a little who little girl who was good and met friend with everyone on account of her goodness 
and was finally saved from a mad bull by a number of rescuers who admire her moral character. Wouldn't they have saved her if she hasn't been good? The man, the big girl of the small girl. It was exactly the question that the bachelor has wanted to ask. Well, yes, admit it the unlamely but i don't think they could have run quite so fast to her head if they don't have liked her so much it's a stupid story i have never heard said the big girl of the small girl with immense conviction i didn't listen after the first bit it was so stupid say circle the small girl made no actual comment on the story but she had long ago recommend of murder repetition of her favorite line. You sh don't seem to be a success as a storyteller, said the bachelor, suddenly from his corner. So, <clears throat> from the second part of the table, the resolution is because her stories were lack of imagination. They didn't enjoy her story a bit, and some of the it's like a <clears throat> the children moved listlessly toward the end of the carriage. Evidently, her reputation as a storyteller did not rank high in the estimation. The second one is it's a stupid story I have never heard said the big girl of the small girl with immense conviction. And the last is, I didn't listen after the first bit. It was so stupid, said Sigril. Uh, I will tell the climax when the bachelor interrupt their storytelling. Um, you don't seem to be a success as storyteller, said the bachelor suddenly from his corner. The unprecedented in instant defense act is unexpected attack. It's very difficult thing to tell a story that children both can understand and appreciate. He says stiffly, I don't agree with you, say the bachelor. Perhaps you would like to tell them a story. What's the aunt's retort? Tell us a story, demand the big girl of the small girls. Once upon a time, uh, yes. Uh, when a bachelor interrupt the story telling, they would get curious and tell him to tell them a story. Tell us a story, demand the bigger of the small girls. This is the bigger girls set. Yeah. Um, uh, Okay, tell us a story, demand the bigger of the small girls. Once upon a time began the bachelor. There was a little girl called Bertha, who was extraordinarily good. The children's momentarily aroused interest began at once to flicker. All stories seemed dreadfully alike, no matter who told them. She did all that she was told. She was always truthful. She kept her clothes clean, ate milk, puddings as as though they were jam tarts, learned her lessons perfectly and was polite in her manners. Was she pretty? asked the bigger of the small girls. Not as pretty as any of you, said the bachelor, but she was horribly good. There was a wave of reaction in favor of the story. The word horrible in connection with goodness was a novelty that commended, in, commended itself. It seemed to introduce a ring of truth that was absent from the aunt's tales of infant life. She was so good, continued the bachelor. Where Were there any sheep in the park, demanded Cyril. No, said the bachelor. There were no sheep. Why weren't there any sheep, came the inevitable question arising out of that answer. Right, Sam. Uh, this is our prediction when the bachelor was storytelling. Our prediction was they would sorry sorry they would ask a lot of questions as what they did when the aunt was storytelling but 
The evidence is the children's momentarily aroused interest began at once to flicker. All stories seemed dreadfully alike, no matter who told them. And they also asked a lot of questions while watching our storytelling. Okay, we will go to the resolution when the bachelor finished and left the carriage. Mm -hmm. uh, the war and the anyway, the um, bachelor is collecting his belongings preparatory to leaving the carriage. I kept them quiet for uh, 10 minutes, which was which was more than you were able to do, unhappy woman. He observed to himself as he walked down the platform of the Temple Camp Station for the next six months, or so those children will accept her in public with demands for an improper story. Uh, when the bachelor finished at the carriage, they love the story and want to want the bachelor to stay and tell more story to them. The story began badly, say the smaller of the small girls, but it has a beautiful ending. It's only only a beautiful story. <coughs> Uh, yes, it's the uh, only beautiful story I ever heard. Okay, thank you for listening.